Hey everybody, it's Justin from Check In Easy. We have an awesome special guest today, uh, Tori Klein, who is the director of uh, UNLV Foundation and Institutional Events. She's one of our great uh, clients and users of Check In Easy. And she's here for a couple minutes today to kind of share some for her experiences with Check In Easy and the different ways she's used it because she hasn't just used it for check in. Um, and then also, she's been doing events for a long time and she's got some really great tips to share with you. So Tori, thanks so much uh, for being here with us. I'm and delighted to be here, Justin. You know, I'm a big fan. So um, thank you so much for uh, including me and inviting me today. Well, I just wanted to, I, I'm, the reason I've been doing events so long is because I'm old. I'm 50 and I've been doing no. this, and you can believe it, for, uh, for 30 years or more. And um, in a variety of different capacities. So, but. I'm new to the university and the academic setting, but at the end of the day, events are events. You have, there are always guests that are more demanding than others. There are always people that have to be recognized. The paper list thing is cumbersome and difficult, and it makes an evening's event, when you have so many moving parts, incredibly difficult and challenging. And I've been dying to find, I've been looking for years for a tool that would really give us the ability would release me from carrying around a notebook all night so that I could do the job I needed to do, which is to solve problems. I mean, we had over 75 volunteers work with us this particular evening. And I'll give you a little uh, uh, image of what the event was. Yeah. Um, it was October 9th. Um, the foundation is the fundraising arm of the university. So all the money that flows into the university comes to the foundation first before it goes out to scholarships, to students, to the colleges. Um, we're only about 50, just over 50 years old. So a lot of our donors are at, that, um, that started with us in the beginning are actually still alive. But we do have an older donor base, as is often the case in, in most universities. Um, this event, traditionally, we have about 500 guests attend. Last year, it increased. We had over 600. This year, we secured um, former President Bill Clinton as our keynote, and wow. we knew we would have a large guest list. And it ended up being over 1,000. Wow. So, um, yeah, and, and as a result of that, because his fee is so big, we also had to sell. Um, it cost a lot more to put on the event. And, and before we could actually get to the point where we could commit and send out invitations, we actually sold, uh, this event is fairly inexpensive in terms of what it costs our attendees, um, but we haven't been charging for it for very many years. So the concept of selling tables at high prices is really a new thing for us. Mm -hmm. But before we started and before we actually mailed the invitation, we sold uh, all of our $20,000 tables. Uh, we had four price points of our tables, 20000 7500 5000 and 3000 and our tickets were $200 a piece. Mm -hmm. And we really only had a few left of the 3000 and the 5000 tables by the time the invitations dropped, which is remarkable. Yeah. Um, bottom line is, every single table level had separate benefits because we had to make those $20,000 guests, table purchasers, feel right. special and down the line. So, um, is if it isn't complicated enough to get to, to take care of a thousand, over a thousand guests at a dinner, we had two simultaneous receptions at the same time. Um, there were uh, the get all the guests at the twenty thousand dollar tables were invited to attend a what we called our chef's reception, which was for VIPs. We had all the guests, or two guests from each table at the 7,500 point, and uh, then all the guests from 5,000, 3,000, and the ticket holders went to the main reception that was held in the area just below the ballroom where we were holding dinner. Right. So that was complicated in and of itself. So it meant when we checked in guests, we had to know as we checked them in which reception they were going to, and therefore what, as well as what table they were going to. That was really important from the get-go. And it's complicated if you're doing paper notebooks, you realize you're looking, it's just a lot of information to totally. share. So check, in a, check in Easy actually solved a lot of problems for us because we realized in order to make Check in Easy smart, we had to think through those key, how to, how to define the, the key components to make it work. So when guests came up to us, we had their name, their last name, the number of guests that might be with them. Mm -hmm. And then we also had, we had a code that was uh, for the special reception. And then we had another code, we had another bit of a moving part. Once we got guests seated at the dinner, um, about, once the, about 
20 minutes after their entree was served, we moved four guests from the top tier tables into a private photo session with mm-hmm. President Clinton. All those guests had to be pre-vetted by the Secret Service, so we had special every all each one of those tables had a development officer assigned to that table to go and get those guests and move them out of the room into a separate room to do mm-hmm. the queue them up, photo line, you know, get their photo taken, and then we had to meet them and then bring them back into the room so that we could finish up the program and have Clinton speak. And we had to do all of that from 5.15 and end it no later than 9.15. And we did it. But it was check in easy without a doubt that made the difference. I just want you to seriously know that. So, so when guests arrived, we had nine check-in stations. They were manned by uh, hotel school students that were supported by my foundation staff volunteers. Mm-hmm. And so when a guest checked in, um, it was really simple. They, you know, they entered their name, and we found them, and then we checked them in. But there was a code next to the name that had either um, uh, had a special code that said uh, X for B if they were a VIP. It right. had their table number, and then it had BC if they were going into Clinton. So if, for example, and we also knew if their table number. Uh, if they were odds, they were seated on the left side of the room. If there was an even number, they were seated on the right side of the room, which also helped us logistically when we were getting people to their seat. Um, we had, so they checked in, the, the support staff would write down their table number, so it means we didn't have to have all of that done in advance. We wrote that down, and we also confirmed their, confirmed their dietary restrictions because our first course was preset. And all of that information, you know, guests never let you know the way they ought to about their dietary restrictions. And the nice thing is we were working with the Bellagio who is very, and we also simplified our first course. So the first course was fish and seafood, but if they were vegan or gluten-free or anything, there was only one substitution uh, for that. So it was an easy, quick thing. But, But we knew for this event to work, what mattered was getting everybody checked in successfully, and then the second point was getting everyone in their seat on time. We got everyone with nine check-in stations for 1,030 guests. Yeah. We never had a line. Awesome. Never. Awesome. And one of the things we did that I'll probably do differently next year is I didn't want to have that long queue, Those, you know, how people set up with the long tables with A through blah, yeah. blah, blah. You know, obviously everyone could check in anyone. Right. And instead of having guests, because we needed a workstation because people needed to sign their, uh, write their table number down. I didn't want them seated at those low, long six tables. I wanted them up and at eye, mm-hmm. eye contact with the guest. So we put our check-in folks at cocktail tables. Um, next time I'd probably use spandex linen so the guests don't trip over table cloth. That's yeah. a good tip. But I, I'd also probably still keep them in a link, in a linear fashion. We sort of had them... Uh, at a, as a V, and then it was in the middle of a large hallway so that the guests could then flow through back behind and enter the ballroom, or if they were going to the chef's reception, the student would raise their hand and the development officer would come and get those guests and escort them down to our special reception, where we use check and easy again hmm. to, if anything, just for a preventative measure, measure to prevent crashers because it showed guests that we knew what we were doing and we knew who we expected to be in that room. And because guests that were being taken down to that reception were being escorted, people who always have a sense of their importance, and because we don't call this a VIP reception, we call it a chef's reception, they were less likely to crash that event. Right. Anyway, um, so that happened. And then when it was time to move guests into dinner, we used our jazz students, uh, the brass section from our jazz uh, program, and we the trumpeters blew the horns at different points throughout, and that cued guests, but actually before that happened, we moved half of our check-in students with their iPads and check-in easy into key points already predetermined into the ballroom, Right. and then we moved our students, uh, all of our students we had about 20 students, uh, hotel school students that were working, and they had welcome signs. Um, and they are human breadcrumbs as guests enter the hotel from ballet to get to the uh, to the ballroom. Yep. On the back of their sign was the floor plan. Wow. And so we used those students at 610 when it was time to move everybody in. We moved those students with their signs into key points in the ballroom. So those 20 students plus the five check-in easy iPad students 
got every single guest down and in their seat, over a thousand guests in less than 15 minutes. Wow. That's awesome. And it's impossible. It's really, it felt like a miracle because this is a networking, a heavy networking event and people love to visit and they just don't sit in, sit down. So I highly recommend trumpeters if you can get them. I highly recommend, <laughs> um, giving your guests a tool to be able, you know, additional ways to find their seat right. and then thinking about how you use check in easy beyond just check in. You use it as a resource to help your guests. They're incredibly appreciative and helpful. And it also helps you in the ballroom when you've got people that don't know that are moving their own, that are taking care of their own seating and deciding that they want to sit at a table of their own design. Yeah. It's a quick way for some people who are empowered to be leaders in the room to go in and solve those problems on the fly instead right. of making the hotel solve those issues. Right. Um, I never thought about that, and I didn't really think about using that until the evening, and it, and it created, it really was a wonderful solution, and it was helpful for the hotel. Did you, at the end of the event, like, reconcile the list, like, last year's, did you guys do it by hand, and now you're able to kind of just log in, download the list, and it says, you know, Stacy Smith checked in at 4 or 5 p.m., did that save you guys a lot of time? Did you kind of utilize that function? Well, we were really, normally, by the time we finish the event, we're so exhausted. We're focused <laughs> on the financials. Yeah. That's what matters most. Right. But by the time we get to the reconciliation, honestly, we, we at some point, sometimes months later, it gets, um, they check it all off back in Razor's Edge. That's right. the tool we use. Yep. This year, it was amazing. We printed a list, once we got our dinner committee together, we printed a list of the folks that had not checked in. Because we wanted to find out if anyone else had seen them. There were some people that we knew off the bat right. that had bypassed us that we knew that were there, but we wanted additional eyes. Right. So we were able to figure out that about there were about 50% uh, of that list actually did attend, and some and either their friends, you know, they found their people and they moved them in or whatnot. But there were 50 about another 50% that actually had paid and didn't come, and that was helpful for us to know. It'll be helpful for us in future years, a few more years as we aggregate that information to see. If we can have a bigger wait list, for example, right? Because we start sending people away, and if we have a wait list and we have those guests come, odds are we'll be able to accommodate them. That's right. very important, and that's the other thing that Check and Easy is great for because then we really know where our empty seats are. Right. We've never known that. You don't know that with the paper form. It's all about you know it requires eyes. And do you have to confirm it in the room? Yes. But checking it, you can take that with you instead of gathering up all the notebooks and figuring that out. Yeah. You just take one iPad in with you to go and confirm the empty seats in the room. It's incredibly powerful. Reconciliation after that one meeting took us, what, a second? Yeah. Because we had the Razor's Edge code as part of our record. Yeah. And it, it was a simple process that um, our technology team ha had handled as opposed to the events team who's already focused on other events and you know, other event modules and Razor's Edge. So that was an incredible, helpful back-end thing to remove off our to-do list. It was incredibly helpful. But I think, um, you know, the the whole gist of it was just the fact that it made the event so much easier. We mm. had, um, we worked in conjunction, the Bellagio was really helpful. We had um, five iPads that the foundation owns up front, yeah. but we knew that wouldn't be enough. And instead of buying them, because we'd engaged the Bellagio up front about our plan and working with you, they had nine iPads oh, wow. that they allowed us to use. And they didn't Great. charge us for it Great. because they wanted to understand the process and they wanted to see what Check and Easy was about. Because hopefully they'll be in the, the they'll be able to share that share you um, with their clients in the future, yeah. which was terrific. And so we had fourteen iPads at our. Um, at our ready to be able to use for the event and it was amazing so so yeah. on your just because i this is a question we get a lot so you had a thousand and i guess this was your first year you might tweak it a little bit next year but you had a thousand people kind of at your front gate to just enter you had nine ipads yes and there was really no line i mean did that move really smooth yeah it was terrific okay. there was no line and the guests were thrilled one they loved the fact that they felt like they were at eye level with the students yeah and they could engage with the students and it was it was quick and easy and two they love the fact that they're it's just going to events that's always such a cumbersome thing you know i hate it when our incredible vip donors you know people who yeah. are you know Steve Wynn and Lane Wynn and, and guests who built Las Vegas, Bill right. Boyd, when those, you know, the Fertitas, when they walk up to um, a student 
and say, you know, and have to queue up in one. It's it's so terrible when they have to get in line and you know A through E and whatnot and right. say, you know, I'm Bill Boyd or I'm Steve Wynn. But I'm telling you, a lot of times the students don't know, and right. our staff sometimes doesn't know. Right. And this way, we also utilize the development officers as the as our guests were arriving. They would they would assist with the process. They would keep an eye on for the open tables and then take people right up to them to check in. Oh, I'd like you to meet. Um, Elaine Wynn, oh, right. you know, Ms. Wynn, we'd like to check you in. It was that simple. So that way the student that had the last name, they felt like it was, uh, all I know is our donors loved it. And Great. you ought to be getting a lot of calls for, for it because um, I know we've been getting calls about it. So um, it, it changed the way they think about that process. And at the same time when they saw the students in the room with the iPads, yeah. that let them know that they had additional support. So it was great. Right. I, I, it, it's the single biggest change we've had in our events yeah. that we've made to our events that worked exactly how it said it would and then some. You know, normally when you make a big change when you do events, there's always a, some sort of hang up, some sort of snafu. Things don't work the way yeah. they seem, they say they will. They're just, I mean, you did it. It was great. <laughs> and we were so incredibly yeah. thrilled. And I think people were blown away about it and they were also thrilled we feel like at uh here at unlv since we are you know we're hospitality innovation really at the heart of it yeah that here at unlv we need to be at the heart of hospitality innovation as well and so you gave us the ability to do that and it could it was incredibly affordable it was incredibly simple yeah. you couldn't have been more gracious and easy to deal with we i know we had a lot of questions in the front but I'll tell you, our IT guys are absolutely the ones that say we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. Yeah. And you blew them away, and they <laughs> completely said we could do it. I say it's called checking easy, not checking hard. Exactly. <laughs> so when you've got technology guys that say that we yeah. can make these kind of changes for an event of this magnitude, then that's half the battle. That's great. So they were thrilled. I mean, another thing that's hard for us is Razor's Edge is just difficult. And so normally at some point in the process, like a day after our SVPs come in, I take everything offline and I manage it from an Excel spreadsheet. Yep. This year, we were able to keep it in RA, RE and, and try to find some additional strength. So it helped us sort of learn more about some of what it offers, which isn't much. But right. we until about, about noon, the day of the event, we downloaded because we knew exactly what we needed to upload into Check In Easy. And we built so much intelligence into the codes that we used, and we trained everybody on how to use Racer's Edge. I actually taught a class for the hotel school, school students to wow. know what they were in for. Um, but we were able to uh, upload the information about, you know, I said we, we pulled it out of RE at noon, so it was in Check In Easy at, what, 12.02? <laughs> and we were ready, and so everything was up late. We added in, so it was really incredible. Um, I that's awesome. Can't say enough good things about it. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, this was fantastic. I think people watching this will definitely get a good sense of using it for colleges and universities, especially a lot of our clients use Razor's Edge or another kind of CRM system like it. And um, I mean, thank you so much for your time. This is great. It's my um, pleasure, and we love working. With same so here, you. same here, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you soon for your next one. I hope so. Yeah, we've got we've got a, an estate jewelry auction that we're going to be doing on December 3rd that okay. is a whole other process. So, yes, we will be in touch. All right, fantastic. Bye. Thank you, Tori. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.